Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Frankie Marsden, the meet director for the 2022 DHSA state meet. It's nice to see everybody. I'm certain you've probably gotten a couple of communications from me recently, so hopefully you might have read a couple of them. Um, the purpose of today's meeting is to essentially cross the uh, coaches meeting off the checklist of things to do. Uh, I think this virtual solution is actually a much easier way to do things. Uh, a lot less hectic than doing it the day of, crowding into that room at uh, the Campus Recreation Center at Georgia Tech. So we'll try and be brief with this. But we've got a lot of territory to cover. Um, hopefully we'll answer any questions you may have. If you have questions during the meeting, please direct them to the chat feature. And I've got a moderator here with Evan Nylander. Um, he'll kind of feed those to me as we're going along. Um, but again, please don't be bashful about asking questions. Hopefully we can give you all the information you need to make your experiences you know, later on this week, a, a positive one and a good one. Um, I do want to thank each and every one of you for all the hard work you put in this year. Again, I know this was another challenging year with COVID. Um, so you guys, again, really uh, deserve a very sincere pat on the back, uh, and probably a pay raise for all the great work with your athletes. So again, we want to culminate things with a terrific state meet. And uh, again, we'll try and make this uh, as informative and helpful as possible. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, just a couple of quick reminders about meat format, the flow and pace of the meat. So we are returning back to a traditional two pool prelim with the girls in the diving well side pool, kind of in the center of the building and the boys in the scoreboard side of the pool. Um, the meet again is gonna run with dive ever starts and we will try and move things along at a nice brisk rate. I've run timelines on both meets. Both meets are certainly going to get done within about three to three and a half hours. The one five they meet may run a little bit quicker. And if it does, we'll take measures as needed to make sure that we slow things down to ensure that uh, athletes get some reasonable rest in between events. Um, again, big reminder about Georgia Tech, the lane numbering is zero through nine, not one through 10. So make sure your kids know that and understand where everything is. Lane zero is on the far side of the pool essentially on the window side of the building. Lane nine is on the near side of the pool by the grandstand. We'll again take our traditional 15 minute diving break after the 50 free before the 100 butterfly. With running two pools, essentially the way the clock's gonna start on that when either you know, the, the last pool to hit the break, say the girls hit the break after the boys, start that 15 minute break when the second group gets done. Nobody's going to get short changed on that break. One, one pool might get a little bit, a couple of extra minutes uh, added break in between the 50 free and the diving. Again, we will take small breaks after each event to scroll the top 30 in each event, recognize them so you guys can understand who the returning swimmers are. Um, again, that shouldn't take more than about a minute or so after each event. There is no bullpen for this year's preliminaries or finals for that matter, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Again, athletes are on their own to get to the blocks on their own. They cannot miss their events. There are consequences for that that our referee Doug Kent will you know, clarify later. But again, there is no staging for athletes for prelims. They go directly to the blocks. The only group we are going to stage will be in the finals for just the top 10 so we can parade those athletes. I'll have more details on that in just a moment. There, um, again, we're going to return the top 30 from the 1 to 5A meet and the top 30 from the 6 and 7A meet for Saturday's finals. Okay, and then we'll split things out from a divisional scoring standpoint. They'll swim together, but they'll only score points against their scoring division. For finals, again, during finals, we will. We're going to probably do dive over starts just after heat one to keep the pace of that moving with three heats. We don't want that session to drag on too terribly long. In fact, ironically, in some situations, the finals may take longer than the prelims uh, because we're running that just in one pool in that main competition pool in the center of the building. We will, as I mentioned, parade the top 10 qualifiers in each event. So there's going to be a ready area just outside of the timing and scoring room. I've got uh, that. I'll show you in just a minute. I mean, again, your athletes for the top 10, only the top 10 in the finals on Saturday need to report to that ready area before going to the blocks. Everyone else, each one and two, go directly to the blocks for their events. The standard diving break again in 15 minutes will apply in that, in that situation. Five, please. 
I've got an overview of the general area around the Georgia Tech Aquatic Center. Um, you've seen this map, I've emailed it to everybody, and it's also on the DHSSCA website. The main things to point out are, if you notice that red box in the center of the screen, just above that, that's the actual Campus Recreation Center. We are coming in the back door as team entry this year, not the front door. But please plan accordingly, familiarize yourself with the area. These big blue lines on that map delineate traffic for that day coming to the pool for swimming on Friday and Saturday will be one way only traveling northbound away from downtown. So if you're driving down Northside Drive trying to get to Tech Parkway to come to the pool, you cannot drive straight down Tech Parkway to come up to the pool. It doesn't work that way. You have to go around over toward Hallam Mill Road and circle over to Regents Drive and then take a left on the Tech Parkway to approach the building for drop off. Other areas to highlight are other parking areas around the facility. The parking for spectators and for coaches this year is actually going to be in the W10 lot that's directly attached to the PRC. One thing to note with that will be that that is prepaid parking only. You cannot buy that the day of. It's got to be essentially a prepaid spot. That you've got essentially a scan or a printout of that, that parking pass. Okay. Um, I'll cover highlight more details on the actual process of parking and so forth. And it's one other thing to point out, this bottom box on the right, that is the day of team pack pickup location. So if you do not pick up your team pack prior to Friday, that's where you have to go before you come to the building. That's where your team pack with your credentials and all your stuff is going to be, as it was last. We'll talk about team pack pickup in just a few moments. Next slide, please. Athlete and team check-in for diving only on Thursday. Essentially, you are also going to come in the back door of the CRC. There's a picture of that just kind of the top left-hand corner of this slide. Okay, that's the traditional athlete entrance we've used for many years, except for last year during COVID. Um, again, the big thing here is coaches need to accompany their athletes into the building. They can't just come up and say, hey, I'm here. Okay, the coach needs to collect their kids and come into the building at this location. All right. If you're coming from the front of the Campus Recreation Center, if you've parked in the parking locations for diving that are across the street from the CRC, there's a pathway as you're walking toward the CRC. If you kind of go to the left instead of coming to the front doors, pathway that leads around that back entrance for athletes. Otherwise, coaches, if you want to, you can drop your athletes off and you know go park the vehicle quickly, or you just park and walk around. Next slide, please. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to our um, diving coordinator, uh, Vicki Twamer. She's going to give you some details about diving for this year's meet. Vicki. Hello. Can you hear me? I'm having technical difficulties, so I want to make sure you can hear me. Yes? Okay, excellent. All right. Hi, diving party people. So we have got our meet coming up on Thursday. Um, I sent out, um, both on Twitter and Frankie sent out for me, all of the numbers. Um, of all of the competitors we have in each of the events so you should have all of those make sure your kids get their dive sheets into divemeets.com by tomorrow monday january 31st at 4 p.m i know in the one email that i sent i mistakenly put that it was due on wednesday it is not due on wednesday it is due on monday monday january 31st at 4 p.m if they do not have their sheet in on divemeets.com by that time they will not compete in the meet on Thursday. There is nothing that we will do about it. They have until tomorrow at four to get it in. They also have until tomorrow at four to get all of their dive changes in. So they can go in, change all of their dives, whatever they wanna do, it's all gotta be done by four o'clock. Um, the only thing that we will change after the meet is closed is a position change. So the dive itself cannot be changed, but the position may be changed and the lower DB will prevail. So if they wanna go from a front one and a half tuck to a front one and a half pike, they can, but we'll keep the tuck DD because that DD is the lower DD. If they go from the pike to the tuck, then of course the tuck DD is lower, we go with the lower DD anyway. So they can do that and we'll do that on site on the pool deck on Thursday. Um, but the complete dive, you can't go from like a front one and a half to a front double that we will not do. Um, on Thursday, the boards will open at 730. You can get there earlier, but your divers cannot get on the boards until 730 AM. 
the 7.30 a.m. workout is only going to be open for the girls in that first event. So the one through 5A girls, they're the only ones that'll be on, allowed on the boards at 7.30. They'll have a 45 minute workout, then we'll have their events. Once their event closes, then we'll open the boards up to the boys. They'll have a 45 minute workout. Once they're done, then we'll have the six through um, six, seven, a girls for their 45 minutes. And then the boys after that, we sent out a timeline and you can see it on your slide here as well. It is a tentative timeline. And the reason I say that is because we typically run ahead of schedule, knock on wood, this year's the same that we run ahead of schedule. We will start the next event once we are ready for it. So just like in swimming, if you're not there for your event, you won't be able to dive. So make sure that for the later events that you get there early enough in anticipation that we run ahead. And we have run ahead anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. So it all depends on how the flow of the meet is going, how well the kids are going and being ready for their dives and all of that. So um, just for all of the later events, just make sure you're there early. Um, and we don't have the space problem on the pool deck and in the stands that swimming does. So we're a lot more accommodating for any of the athletes who do come in earlier. Um, I will have a brief athletes meeting before each event and we'll go over everything with them and just to introduce them to the referee so that if there are any problems, they have something in, in the middle of their event that they need to talk to the ref that they can. So we'll do that. I will not have a coaches meeting. This will be it. Um, there's not really much that I need to tell you more than what I'm telling you right now. So you don't need to talk to me, stick with your divers. Um, all the divers will do all six of their dives in the prelims. And then we will take the top 10 and move them onto the finals. Those 10 divers will do the same six dives, but if they want to, they will be allowed to change a dive at that time for the finals. So if they want to do like a reverse one and a half in the prelims, but for the finals, they want to do a reverse two and a half, we'll allow them to do it. We just won't be able to dive changing order, but we will change dives. But of course the DD requirements and all of that are still gonna have to be satisfied if we change those dives. Um, also to remember that the first dive does not have a DD limit. It is true DD. So if they wanna break out the big guns and do it for their first dive, it is not capped at all at 1.8. They get their true DD. Then, so they do the one group basically that they double up in. They're gonna do that one dive for dive number one. And then dives two through six have to be a dive represented from each of the five groups. So they may not double up on their dives in dives two through six. There are a few sheets that are online now. I've emailed those coaches as of 1230. I've emailed them today. Um, so just make sure that those things get changed. Uh, and for any of the divers that still have to put their stuff into divemeets.com, make sure that they've got that rule in there, that dives two through six need to be from the five different groups. Um, I think right now there's only one person that hasn't responded to me yet. Um, and so I'll make sure to follow up with that person. But like I said, I'm checking and I'm making sure throughout the day that the dives are in the right order so that the kids can get everything changed. Um, but just remind them of that as they're putting their dives into divemeets.com, that that's the rule that we need to follow there. Um, and oh, the scores will be cumulative. So the scores that they get from the prelims will carry over into the finals. Um, remember you need 190 points in order to, um, score points for your team. And that is about all that I have got. I don't know if there are any questions or if there's, you want to wait till the end. Sorry, Frankie. I kind of went in a little late because I had to do this from my phone because my computer was not cooperating with me. No, that's okay. Um, just one thing to point out, Vicki admitted to the board open at 7.30, the doors for diving will open around 7 a.m. So again, if you want to get there at 6.30 and sit outside in the cold, knock yourself out. I think it's supposed to rain that day. Um, thank you for that. Uh, I'm going to turn it, uh, let's see, next slide. And I'm going to turn it over to our meet referee, Doug Kent, talk a little bit about the officiating on the swimming side. Okay. Now, can you hear me? Okay. Um, basically, the same stuff as last year. Um, we've got to have we've got to have legal swimsuits. 
You can't have any other logos. A national team suit won't work. A college team suit won't work. It has to be a legal swimsuit. Uh, caps, it must be a, the team cap or a, black, or a blank cap. The manufacturer logo is okay on there. And so is an American flag of a certain dimension. Um, tape on swimmers. We must have a note from a doctor or a physical therapist for tape, especially the KT tape. And the most, the, this must be presented to the meet referee before the, before the session begins. Um, if a club swimmer is wearing any kind of tape, they will be administratively disqualified. That time cannot go into the USA Swimming uh, database if they are doing something that is not legal for USA Swimming. Um, if you have a swimmer who has recently sprained their ankle or they've got a cut or a bandage for a cut or wound, come see me. Those kind of things are legal, all right? I just don't wanna be surprised by, by something coming up on the block. And also please report to me anybody who's wearing some kind of necessary medical device like an insulin pump. I don't wanna step anybody like that down to find out why they've got something taped to their arm, okay? And also on the uniforms, if you've got anybody uh, who is wearing a swimsuit that is slightly different because of modesty reasons, uh, please let me know, okay? All right, next slide. All right, relays, please do, please follow the instructions. The early takeoffs will be judged by the officials on deck. Uh, Tech has got a wonderful uh, Omega relay takeoff system. It is extremely accurate. And uh, relay takeoffs are generally done by two officials. In this meet, we're gonna do one official and, uh, or it could be two officials and the relay takeoff system. The relay takeoff system cannot initiate a call, but it can save somebody from a call made on the uh, deck that is incorrect. And that's what we have been doing for every year I've worked uh, this meet at Tech. Uh, please remember that they can only be entered in four events and a maximum of two individual events. Relays count, of, count as events. And if you switch your swimmers between relays, that's extra events. Please don't do that. Frankie's already reminded you uh, uh, about the lanes in the pool. In fact, this, uh, yeah. It is zero through nine again this year. Uh, I was there last night for another meet. Next slide. Before you, we have a question for you. Uh, oh, sure. Yeah. Does, does the tape rule apply for divers as well? No, it does not. The, the tape rule for, there is no tape rule for diving. Thanks. Okay, declared fault starts. It still counts as a swim, so that would be one of your two. Um, that would be one of your two entries that you can do as an individual, um, and you cannot do a declare fault start in order to allow a swimmer to do as an extra extra relay. All right, declared fault starts need to be done before the event begins. Remember, if if a swimmer misses and you've not declared a fault start, they are out of the meet. Okay, results are unofficial on the scoreboard until all the times have been resolved. Once we have them resolved, they will be res uh, scrolled on the scoreboard. Typically, we do that uh, after we've won, run one or two heats in the next event. Uh, disqualifications. Coaches, please only discuss them with the deck referee or the meet referee. If you'll go to the deck referee first, you'll have two levels to talk to. If you come directly to me, uh, then uh, you won't have anybody to appeal to. False starts and early takeoffs, again, take required dual confirmation. So there's no need to ask us whether we had dual confirmation for it. We always will. Um, we talked, uh, we've already talked about the no show for the event. So next slide. All right. This has been my pet peeve this year, and it's just been getting worse as the years go on. Sportsmanship. 
GHASA bylaws rule 2.70. We will not allow profane language. If I hear it, I'm going to take the swimmer and I'm gonna stop the meet and I'm gonna walk him to his coach. Okay, and per the uh, swimming and diving rule book, this includes the warm up periods. So you need to tell your swimmers that they need to watch what they say. They need at the finish not to scream words that shouldn't be said that they finish. The other, my other pet peeve is artificial noise makers. Uh, the GSHA rule bylaw uh, 2.76, they're only allowed in outdoor events. And since uh, Georgia Tech is indoor, uh, no artificial noise makers, no bells, drums, whistles, shakers, horns. Please don't have your swimmers bring those in the building. That's what I have. Anybody have any questions? Uh, I appreciate that. Guys, again, if, if you do have questions specifically regarding suits, you can easily take, you want to find the meat ref prior to the start of the meet. They are usually located either right on the deck or if it's prior to the meet, there's an official's room in room 134 um, on the back hall downstairs. Next slide, please. Okay, theme pack pickup for swimming. Okay, so you must do this before coming to the CRC. You have to get your envelope with all your credentials and all the stuff that's in there, and I'll give you the list of stuff that's in your pack. But this needs to be done before you come to that athlete entry door. Okay, do not just drive up and think, oh, we'll come in and get our stuff the day of the meet. It doesn't work that way. That will jam up the entire process of what we've laid out worked very effectively last year. We are going to make those team packs available all day on Thursday from 9 a.m. until about 8 or 9 p.m. Essentially, if you're out diving, we'll have somebody at that back door of Tech Park White at Athlete Entrance, as you see the picture right there on the slide. Drive up, park the car, run inside, get your envelope. You're good. Okay, that way you go back, day of the meet, everybody packs up, you hand out all your credentials before you get on the team vehicle. And you drive down to the tech and you come into the building completely prepared and equipped. Okay. If you cannot do this, if travel prohibits it, or you just scheduling doesn't work out, or you can't pick that stuff up, there will be day of arrangements for that. Keep in mind, anybody from your team can take care of this responsibility. It doesn't have to be the head coach. You can send a parent down there that works downtown. That, that, I don't have a problem with that, but they're accountable for that pack when they do pick it up. Okay, so make sure they don't lose it. It's somebody you trust. Having coach can get it. You know, if you've got a parent that teaches at Georgia Tech, they can get it. We're, we're not particular about who gets it. But the most important thing is get it on Thursday. It makes everything work so much easier. Okay. If you have to pick things up the day of competition, we'll be an off-site lot that is not at CRC at 7-Eleven Marietta Street. A quarter mile from the pool. It's not far easy to get to. You literally drive in it to a huge parking lot. Well, this my station in a car right there with the remaining team packs. You can drive up, quickly grab that, and then come to the building, okay, with your credentials. When you get it, don't just grab it and take the envelope and go, we're going to the pool. Get it, distribute your credentials to your athletes. Then park and drive into the drop-off area, do whatever you've got to do to get them to that back door to come in the building. Okay, but do not just grab it and go, okay, we're good. We'll sort it out when we get to the pool. No, it doesn't work that way. Get it. There's a spot where you can wait, get all the stuff out to your kids, and then come to the athlete entry area. Okay, that will be available for day of up until about the start of the session. So we start the swimming on nine, at 930 for the one to five A schools. Once, you know, if you've got a kid, you got one kid, they're only in the bus stroke. And you don't want to get there at 9.30 in the morning. You want to come, you know, around 10 o'clock, 10.30, whenever to get to the pool. That's fine. At that point, you'll actually, you will come to the back door. We'll show up there and there will be your team, the remaining team back there. And up until about the start of competition, we're going to actually go ahead and, again, require you, if you're doing day of team pack pickup, to go to that 7-Eleven Marietta Street location. Question. Hey, Doug Kent, coming back to you for a question real quick. Are there any rules 
around athletes wearing logos or club team caps during warmups. Doug, you're muted. Here we go. All right. It, I was just about to answer that. It's not illegal to wear them during warm-up. It's only illegal during competition. But if I were uh, a coach of these teams, I would not have my athlete wear club caps because we officials are standing on the side of the pool looking at the swimmers warm up. We're going to notice the club caps. We're going to remember those swimmers. We're going to be looking for them later. Do you understand? Good point. Absolutely. Thanks, Doug. Second question, Frankie, what time will packets be available at the 7-Eleven Marietta Street lots on Friday? Those will be available roughly about 30 minutes before athlete entry to the building ends. Agile team arrival for each session, it begins about 30 minutes before the actual warm-ups. So, for example, for the uh, 1 to 5, I mean, I think the earliest building entry is somewhere around 7.30. So that's you know, back that up to around 7 a.m. on um, Friday morning. And then Saturday, again, we'll have somebody out there around probably 3.30. And one more thing on that. If you do come to that area and there's nobody stationed there, do come to the building. The, the team back is most likely at the pool. But otherwise, go there first if you haven't picked it up on Thursday. So what's in your team pack? All right, you have credentials. And you're getting credentials for prelims and finals in your team pack this year. Okay. They're all going to be there. So you don't have to go through the process of getting the stuff again on Saturday morning or Friday evening or whenever. Okay. So again, please, you know, keep track of that. Don't lose it. If you lose that stuff, there might be a replacement cost. There's also credentials for your coaches and your relay alternates. Okay. And every credential is going to be slightly different. So the athletes are going to have one credential, the coaches are going to have another credential, and the relay alternates will have a separate credential. Remember, the relay alternates are not allowed on the pool deck, nor are they allowed to sit in your team area. So you are managers. Managers are supposed to stay, again, in that section 101, 101, I'm sorry, 201A. Um, more importantly, for the coaches, your credential for the meet is kind of, you know, music festival style. It's one credential you put on and it's permanently on there. So you literally cut it off. Leave it on Friday and Saturday. It's applied to both days, so don't lose it. You'll also have one printed heat sheet in your team pack because I'm sending out PDF versions to everybody and putting it on the internet. If charge, go print off as many as you want. Share them with the parents. Wallpaper your house, I don't care. I am not going to provide a ton of printed copies. You'll have one printed copy in your team back, and that's it. Honestly, again, you know, take advantage of the ability to print these and print as many as you want. Print them all for your kids. I don't care. There's also just going to be some general meet information reminders in there. There will be a full team roster in your team back. These, this is everybody on your team that's coming to the meet. Athletes, coaches, relay alternates, managers. Okay, and I'm going to send out a PDF in that admin list uh, early this week. That may come out either this evening or first thing tomorrow. Please double check that and make sure all your people are accounted for. You will need to sign that roster and give it to the check-in worker when you arrive at the pool. That certifies that everyone is present. And more importantly, it certifies all the coaches on that list are approved by the GHSA. You are literally going to sign a document saying we certify that this is accurate and correct. So when you get flagged for having an uncertified coach, I'm going to show the GHSA a document that you signed that said, no, everybody's certified, okay? Um, there will be a relay change form in your team pack as well. Uh, those are also, again, being sent out electronically via PDF, and then we'll have printed copies of the pool, obviously. Those are for changes to your relays only, either order or personnel. Those need to be into the timing and scoring room no later than the beginning of your heat that is actually swimming. However, if you've got a relay change and you know it, go ahead and fill it out and get into that timing room early. Don't drag your feet on that. It gives our computer people a jump on things and, again, avoids you accidentally not getting that change in and potentially creating a rules infraction. Okay? Please, again, make sure that you take care of those. 
if your relays are listed correctly and accurately in the heat sheet, the way, the way you see it, you don't need to turn anything in. They're in there correctly. These are only for changes. Again, you can change them at, at any point up to essentially the start of the heat. And I've seen, I watch one coach, the record is six times on one relay. Okay, it'll happen. Okay, and please be careful when you do make the changes that you're not creating a rules and fractions. I covered that earlier. There's going to be a summary sheet that lists all your credentials, all your people, all your fees, and all that good stuff. And there'll be a seating diagram of the facility. Okay, I did see it send out seating assignments yesterday or part of this morning. Sorry. Um, so again, please double check that so you know where you're going to be located in the facility. Next slide, please. Athlete drop off for swimming. So you've got your team back. You're ready to come in the building. So the day of the meet, the athlete drop off will be on Tech Parkway in that back entrance that we've highlighted. There's a picture on the left. Again, notice the picture on the right. That arrow is pointing north, going away from downtown, down Tech Parkway. That's one way traffic only. Buses will be able to, you know, vehicles will be able to stack up and line up leading up to the facility. We'll have check-in workers actually outside this year. Unlike we've done in years past, we're going to have them essentially trying to collect teams as they get out of their vehicles to come into the building. Okay, please again remember traffic is one way only northbound during drop-off. Arrive on time, not early. There's a set assigned time window for your team to come in the building. Do not come early. If you do, we will make you go essentially to the back of the line and wait outside. This is all designed to limit the amount of traffic that's going to you know, accumulate trying to come in the building. We've got a lot of bodies to get the building, and we really want to manage this efficiently and effectively and safely. The big thing here is don't drive up to this area until your actual designated time window. We've got these things broken into roughly, you know, Pods of about 12 to 15 teams for each block. So that's, if we stick to that plan, everybody gets in the building in a timely fashion. And it's 30 minutes before you're supposed to warm up. So you got plenty of time to come in the building, get to your assigned team area, get everything you need situated, and get to the warm up pool on time. Okay? And if you arrive early, and I'm sorry if you got transportation issues, but it's not something we can control. But again, if you arrive early, I'm sorry, you're going to have to wait outside. Had a team wait literally outside for three hours a couple of years ago. And I felt terrible for them. There's not much we can do. You know, for, for a long stretch in between the two sessions, Georgia Tech and they're having varsity practice. We really can't be in the building while that's going on. It's an NC2A issue. Okay, so again, we, we want to try and be accommodating. But like I said, we, we've mapped this out pretty clearly, and it's been a consistent, consistent process for us for a number of years. Also, your team is not allowed to just drive up into this drop-off area and park. And go, well, we're not, it's not our time yet. We're just going to wait here. We're going to be asked to circle the block. It's kind of like being at the airport. Okay. And you can park your vehicle and then walk back to the building if you get there early. You know, that, that can work too. But like I said, if you want to actually drive up, save your kids the, you know, haul or whatever, your choice. The important thing is, again, please. Stick to the plan with the drop-off times, the assigned drop-off times. And more importantly, when you come in, we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second, have that credential in hand. Next slide, please. For diving, for parking, we're going to talk a little bit about parking right now. So athlete drop-off, again, is at the back entrance of the CRC. Parents can drop off, drop the kids off. Coach can catch them at the back door, and then they can come in as a team. And the big thing here is, is you're coming in the building, we want you to come in as a team, not just, oh, well, we'll show up and we'll meet you on deck. It doesn't work that way. Teams into the building as a supervised group by a coach, and it should be the entire group if at all possible. If you've got stragglers, you can have another coach meet them at the back door or wait at the back while the rest of the team goes in with another coach if need be. Again, athlete drop-off lane is located at the back and then proceed to the parking areas for Thursday's diving. Passenger parking for diving is not going to be in that W10 lot to attached to the CRC. That will not be available on Thursday for diving. Parking for diving is going to be in the W02 lot, which is the student center lot. 
that's across the street from the, uh, from the CRC. It's the same lot we used last year. It's a click and park lot. You know, push the button, get a ticket, pay when you leave. That's for spectators and coaches. There's no need to reserve a spot or anything else like that. You can pay for that the day of. Again, there is a limited amount of minibus parking. If you do have a larger vehicle that needs to park on Tech Parkway, you can pre-purchase that. That is pre-purchase only. And again, that's for diving. The only vehicles that can park in this spot, though, are minibuses. That's it. Big school buses or coach buses, those are not allowed to park in that area. There's just no way to safely stick a vehicle that big without creating, a, frankly, a safety hazard on Tech Parkway with the two-way traffic that they have. So again, if you have a, a bus, they need to, that's drop off and pick up only. So plan that accordingly. Next slide, please. Parking for swimming. So on Friday and Saturday, parking for swimming is gonna be in the W10 lot, which is located right next to the CRC. It's a great setup. We really appreciate tech arranging for that for this year. That is prepaid parking only though. You have to buy the pass in advance of coming to the pool. You cannot drive up with cash in hand and go, hey, let me in. It doesn't work that way. Okay, you have to have a printed or scannable parking pass to do that. Okay, that can be done at the link listed here. I've sent out information on that already. If they do show up and, they, and they, you know, if for some reason that lot is full, which I doubt it will be, but if they show up, the lot's full, or if they haven't prepaid for parking, there's a lot located on State Street, about a half mile from the pool. It's the W23 lot, and it's on the bigger transportation map that I've already sent out to teams. Again, there is parking for minibuses and larger passenger vans. If they don't, you know, if they're oversized passenger vans, that can be pre-purchased on the same parking link that's listed here. Okay, please again, only minibuses or vans at that location. You cannot park personal vehicles there, Bigger buses, school buses, and coach buses are not allowed to park at that location. There is no on-campus parking for any larger vehicles like a school bus or a coach bus. So that person's going to need to drop you off and arrange to come back and pick you up when you're ready to be picked up. Okay. Don't park anywhere on campus without a parking pass. Aim for a parking spot. You will get ticketed, towed, and or booted. A they are aggressive about enforcing that. Uh, next slide, please. Team entry. So coming into the building. So again, you can't come in the building. You can't even come to the drop-off area without previously picking up your team pack. I've hammered that home. Teams can only come into the building during their scheduled arrival time. You've got a set, you know, time that you can come in the building. Okay. If you're late, you're late. That's fine. But I'm trying to be there on time. But if you get there early, you're going to have to wait outside until that set time is, has come. Unless you're invited into the building. If we're caught up, we don't have anybody else waiting. We're not going to you know, sit there and unreasonably make you wait. But otherwise, if there's another group, you know, the, the existing group that's got a set time to come in, they, they get first priority. So again, just try and manage it accordingly. Okay. Again, we're coming in the back entrance of the CRC, not the front. Make sure you understand that clearly. That is for, the front in, entrance is for spectators only. We'll have check-in people outside to help speed the process. So again, pull up, identify yourself as a team. We'll have those guys out on the sidewalk ready to kind of catch you guys and try and get to the building as quick as possible. You must enter the building as one group. This is for prelims and for finals. The coach may, can remain and wait for any late arriving kids, but we don't have kids just randomly show up and say, hey, I'm here for the swim meet. Even if they have a credential, they can't come in unless they're supervised by a coach. Again, it's more of an efficiency matter. It just makes the process work so much easier. Everyone must have credentials visibly displayed. So credential in hand or literally if it's a wristband, goes around your wrist, have it on, hold it up so we can see. If you don't have a credential, you don't come in the front, don't come in the back of the building. They'll be sent around in the front to pay admission. Everyone must, again, have that credential in hand. That's why we want that team pack picked up early. Don't show up and then pull the envelope out on the sidewalk and go, oh, let me hand all these out. Doesn't work that way. It's just going to jam everything up and foul it up for everybody else. 
he penalized everybody in that process. Just a couple of teams to really jam this thing up and make it more stressful for everybody. So stick to the plan, please. Teams, again, must provide that signed roster. And then they come in the building at that check-in point, confirming who's, who's there, and the coaches are all certified by GHSA. Pay your entry fees at that point. Either you can hand a check to the check-in person, or if you need to come inside and square up with our, you know, an additional person, we'll have a table right there, kind of a help desk, desk to manage that. Once you come in the building, go directly to your team area. If you're seated upstairs, don't go to the deck. Okay. In fact, the first two sessions that are coming in, all those teams are seated upstairs. If I see anybody on the deck early, I'm going to know that you're essentially not where you're supposed to be. Okay. In fact, we're going to essentially prevent teams from coming through those doors, first wave of teams that come in because all those teams are located upstairs. But please go directly to your team area. Get situated, get settled in. And then when your warm-up time comes, you know, a few minutes before, make your way to the deck. If you're seated on the deck, then obviously you can come on the deck when you arrive because that's where your team area is. But most importantly, go straight to your team area when you come in the building. Okay, please stick with this plan. Again, the idea is to not overrun this place. And more importantly, Georgia Tech will be wrapping up swim practice at that point. We want to be respectful of that and manage that accordingly. Next slide, please. I have a question about parking real quick. Yes. Um, if many buses are doing the prepaid parking tech parkway, do they just display that receipt on their dashboard or do they still need to come in and get a color copy sheet like in years past? There should be a printable uh, as it comes off of that, whatever. That that on your dash. Uh, the second question, are there the team fees $15 per athlete? Is there a fee for coach? There was because there's a lot of you, but no, there's no entry fee for coaches. The entry fee only applies to swimmers, divers, managers, and relay alternates. Next slide, please. Oh, go back one, please. I'm sorry. Yeah. One thing to point out, I've got a couple of pictures here. So I've got the back door in the upper left. So if you look over to the right, that's that stairwell that goes upstairs. So if you're a team that's seated upstairs, Instead of coming down the back hall that you're so used to doing as you go through those wooden doors that are right there, you're actually going to swing around and essentially take a quick U-turn and go up the stairs, and that'll lead you to the hallway that's underneath spectator seating, okay? And that hallway, is, you know, the sections are marked very clearly. As you're essentially going to walk toward the front of the building all the way into the hallway, that's where teams are going to be located. And when you go to your team areas, go to your team area, not somebody else's, and don't go, my gosh, there are all these open seats in the spectator area. Let's go there. That's not for you. Okay. Teams do not set up in those areas. Okay. Next slide, please. After, just sorry. Uh, after the meet ends, if you have buses, mini buses, are we allowed to pick up on Tech Parkway, our teams afterwards, or is there a different designated pickup? Yes. Uh, team pickup is on Tech Parkway. You guys can, can go there. In fact, I would advise that because the front of the building, a bunch of spectators, it'll be kind of crowded, you know, with traffic on that area. Just a quick reminder, guys, the completion time for prelims, we're looking at you know, around noon, maybe 12:30 for the one to five they meet to get done. And then for the afternoon for the evening session, we should be done around 9:30, maybe 10 o'clock at the latest, 7 a. And then on Saturday, we're probably looking at, you know, probably about 2:30, 3 o'clock, finish time for the one to five a finals. And then in the evening, again, 6 to 7 a, we're looking at 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Next slide. Team areas. So your team areas are, they've been communicated and sent out to everybody. Okay. These are either on the deck, either, either bleachers or a deck space. Not everybody's going to get a bleacher that's got a deck area. And I've identified those as either bleacher or team area. Team area. There's no bleacher attached to it, but there's a space on the deck, and we'll have signs up marking these areas. Okay, the deck won't necessarily be taped off, but the bleachers are obviously listed. In several situations, if you've got a half bleacher, you're splitting half that bleacher with another team. So again, be you know be polite with each other. And more importantly, the bleachers, you have your bleacher and you have the space directly behind your bleacher. 
team area, unless there is a team on that diagram. I've got a map of that listed. We're going to do the slide in a moment. If there's not a team behind you and you're not butted up against the timing room on the girls' pool, you've got some real estate behind you to spread out, okay? Again, it's going to be slightly crowded on, on Friday evening. I'm, I'm going to, you know, that's not a surprise for anybody that's been to the meet before. But again, stick to your plan. Only have the people that are supposed to be on the deck or in your team area in the team area. And that is coaches, swimmers, and that's it. Coaches, swimmers, are the only people that can be in those team areas. Parents shouldn't be in there. Relay alternate shouldn't be in there. And more importantly, you know, just random people that showed up at the meet should not be in that area. Okay, they've got other spots around the building that they can be located and situated. If you start letting a bunch of kids come in, it's good. You're going to run out of space. But more importantly, again, I've tried to accommodate teams. You know, you've got a set number of personnel on your team. You might be off by a, a spot or two. However, keep in mind, you're never all going to sit down at the same time. So if you, if you feel like we're short one spot or two spots, Again, there's enough room to have your team have a space to go and spread out and have your stuff there. Your kids are always going to be coming and going to the pool. You as a coach more than likely will be on the deck watching your swimmers compete. Okay. So again, please work with us on that. We try to accommodate you best we can. But the fact that you have a known location helps a lot. It, it, it avoids the chaos of trying to scramble and try and find a spot when you get the building. Again, Look, we'll show you the diagram in a moment. The more important thing is, if you're on the deck, please make sure that you don't walk, completely take over a spot. You know, you don't get from the water to the wall, so to speak. There needs to be a walkway for people to be able to, you know, walk up and down the deck to get to where they need to get. If my team area is not a bleacher, but a standard uh, deck space, uh, is, are teams allowed to have pop-up or camping chairs uh, in those areas? I would advise against doing that. I think that can get a little bit, it's going to get real crowded if you do that. There, again, there's adequate space. And if we hearken back to the days of the meeting at Westminster and at Riverside Military Academy, you guys were located on a gym floor. So this is no different. Okay. But if you bring in like an entire collection of camp chairs, some of those things take up a lot of real estate. So my, my advice is don't bring that. We'll run out of space. Um, teams in seating locations upstairs, again, have been assigned specific sections and rows for your team, okay? Please remain in your team area unless you have swimmers warming up or competing. But like I said, most teams, you're going to be pulling back and forth most of the day. Non-competitors and relay alternates need to stay out of your team areas. Again, relay alternates are located in Section 201. If that space gets crowded, relay alternates have a little bit of flexibility to meander around upstairs. But they uh, to come on the deck for any reason at all, unless you are actually having to opt them in and have them swim, okay? Please, more importantly, clean up your team area before you leave the building. One of, you, one of the things you're going to get when you arrive at the pool, you're going to get a trash bag. Every team will get one. Make sure that you put that to use. We know where you sat. So if it's a complete mess when you leave, we're going to have a conversation, okay? Don't leave a mess. I know this is a struggle for you guys to get your kids to do this, but again, just be respectful of the facility. And more importantly, here's another group coming in behind you. Extend the courtesy to them. Pictures of the seatings. So if you're wondering what, what row am I on, how do I figure out what that is? You look at the end of each row, that picture in the top left, that's actually marked. You see the little A right there. That's what row it is. Okay, the, the rows go from A up. Okay. And the sections markings and the as you're up in that back hallway, as you walk in, you'll see those on placards above the doors. There's a picture of the bleacher on the deck. Those bleachers can accommodate roughly about 25 bodies, give or take, uh, for the smaller bleachers, and the bigger ones can accommodate about 35 bodies. Okay. Again, split bleachers. You've got, look, you can see the space behind that. Okay. The main thing you can't do is don't block any actual building access, entry doors, or exit doors. That's the most important thing. There are a couple of sports rooms that are there. 
get a little bit of flexibility to you know spread out there. But if you're asked by the staff, please don't sit here. Please abide by that. I please. So this is a diagram of the upstairs seating and just the general deck area. You can see the teams are going to be located over toward the diving well above that area. Assigned team areas on deck, those extend not, over, not just over the competition pool, but also less spots on deck as well. For, okay, can sit, as they've been in the past. What was the all that we used to have? Just general traffic flow to enter or exit the pool. If you're coming, from upstairs to go downstairs. We want you to use that back hallway that is outside of spectator seating and use that to walk down that hallway to the stairs that you came up, walked into the building. Do not try and use the stairwell that's inside of the aquatic center by the scoreboard. That will be one-way traffic off of the deck only. Okay? And you'll be fighting through crowds of people trying to get to that spot anyway. Get down there again, you're you're right in the competition pool. Walk through the back hallway, take the back stairs, and then come in the hallway. It's a lot easier, a lot less crowded, and a lot simpler. You will exit the deck from those doors as well. There are two big sets of doors, opposite sides of the timing room. It's real easy again to just kind of get in and out of the in and out of the deck from that location. Okay. I would discourage, if possible, using the stairwell inside of the building and go back upstairs because once you do, you're going to have to walk down that long hallway where a bunch of parents are congregated. It's a lot easier to just use the back stairs. It's so much easier. Okay. But if you're right there, a boy gets done with an event, gets out of the pool and wants to walk upstairs, and it's right there. I understand that. That's common sense. Next slide, please. Oh, I'm sorry. One thing to note, during prelims, the diving well will be the warm up and warm down pool. I have lane ropes and backstroke flags up in that, that pool. Also, that will be available for warm up during the scheduled warm up times. If you got kids that want a little bit of extra warm up time, they've got access to another 10 lanes to hop in and you know do what they need to do if they need extended warm up. Okay. Big thing there is, and that's for prelims. For finals, the diving well is essentially going to be closed not available for warm up, warm up and warm down, we're gonna use what was the boys pool during prelims as the warm up and warm down pool finals, okay? The diving well will not be in use for warm up during finals only, all right? But during prelims, obviously we need the diving well because there's nowhere else to warm up or warm down. Next slide, please. Deck traffic, you know, I've just kind of hit the highlights on this. We've got the entry and exit doors look at highlighted in yellow and in orange. One other thing to bring up, um, for the 500, we're encouraging athlete and the counters to approach their lanes from lane nine, which is the one that's closest to the, um, closest to the grandstand. The important thing there is, again, you know, try and accommodate some room for those folks, make sure they're there a heat at a time so we're not waiting for counters to get on the bed for their races. Next slide, please. Ready room for awards and, and awards and finals. So we're going to parade the top 10 qualifiers, as I mentioned earlier. Okay. Uh, quick question popped up. Are spectators allowed to count for the 500? We would prefer that not to happen. Rather have that, again, that would require extra credentialing. would require a team member to do that for an athlete, a team member or coach. Ready room for oh, oh, uh, awards, let's try this in English, ready room and awards for finals. We're going to parade the top 10 qualifiers for the finals on Saturday. Those folks go to a ready area. If you look at the uh, pictures on the left, that little hallway to the left of the timing room, you see the arrow pointing. That's where they're going to congregate. We want them to assemble a couple of heaps before their race is in the water. Okay. Qualifiers report to that hallway. We'll get them lined up, get them staged out, and parade them out. The awards area is back in its original spot over in the corner underneath the smaller scoring board. Scoreboard, I'm sorry. Um, again, the top three finishers will be presented awards essentially not long after their race is done. We'll have award workers behind the blocks grabbing the top three and getting them over to the awards room. 
okay, or the awards area. So essentially the sequence for finals will be, we'll swim the A final. That's heat three. It'll finish. Our awards people will grab the, the, the top three. The top three again can come from any heat. So they'll be keeping an eye out for results. Careful. They'll grab those kids. We're going to go ahead and start heat one, swim heat one. We're going to swim heat two. Okay. And then we're going to present the awards. And as soon as those are done, we'll parade the A finalists for the next race and rinse and repeat hey, 22 more times. I'll have to do it for diving because diving's on Thursday. Next slide, please. Spectators and streaming, we are happy to welcome back spectators to this year's meet. I know that was a missing, big missing part for last year's meet. We're looking forward to their energy and excitement and support. Tickets can be purchased in advance of the event at the GoFan app on the GHSA website, or you can pay the day of, either with cash or credit card. Okay. The spectator entrance is the front of the building at 750 First Drive. Again, parking for spectators is located in the W10 lot. Doors will open one hour and 45 minutes before it begins. Okay. So tell your parents to plan accordingly. I know there are some that like to get there early. They're going to have to wait outside if they do. Okay, they're not going to open any earlier than that. Again, please plan accordingly. More importantly, please remind your parents that they should not come into the building with an armful of towels, coats, or whatever else they're going to bring in, or shakers, to save off seats in the building. That is not permitted. The only thing that can save a seat in the building is a body. Okay? And, and look, I don't have a problem with one person, you know, husband and wife go to the meet and the wife decides to go get a hot dog. Right. That's fine. The husband can sit there and hold on to the seat. You can't block off four, five, six, seven, 20 seats and go, this is where, you know, the Broncos are going to sit. Sorry, Brookwood. I'm not picking on you. I just picked the first team name that came into my, my mind. But don't sit there and try and block off, you know, seats, especially in the prime areas right over the top dish pool. That does not work. Okay. It's not fair. It's not appropriate. So again, please stick with the, you know, what's fair to everybody. Spectators again are sections 103 and then 204 and 104 all the way to the school. Okay. Remind spectators, don't go sit with your darling child. And more importantly, your darling child shouldn't come sit with you. If we stick to that plan, there should be enough room for everybody. If we don't. That's when we get into a problem. You know, like, oh, it's, you know, we, we're overcrowded. There's just no seat for anybody. You walk out on the deck and you look up and there, you can easily put your finger on 150, 200 seats. But then you look and, you know, there's a team that's wandered over and is sitting right over the competition pool. That's not fair. It's not right. And the parents want to be able to watch their kids swim. Okay. Again, please remember, not everybody can sit on the 50-yard line. It's general admission and it is what it is. Okay. With a larger number of athletes upstairs, we may hit capacity. If we're sold out, we're sold out. We'll turn people away. But we're keeping a close eye on this because it's a point of emphasis. Back. So again, please be understanding of that. Okay, we'll we'll lodge everything that we can. Like I said, if we run out of room, we run out of room. Finals will be live streamed on the National Federation High School Network. It's like a, you can buy a month pass for like ten bucks. To, to be able to stream it. They're only streaming finals, but great way to, you know, save a trip downtown on a Saturday afternoon or evening. And prepaid parking for spectators will be in the W10 lot. It's prepaid only. They cannot drive up with cash and go, hey, let me in. Doesn't work that way. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. COVID protocols. This is a lot shorter slide this year, thank goodness. A lot of this stuff I've already covered. A couple of big things, though. Make sure your kids arrive attired. It helps if they come in. They don't have to all crowd in the locker room. Okay. Speaking of locker room, please remember that safe sport protocols are in place. That means that those athlete lockers that are located by the competition pool are for minors only. Okay. Adults are not allowed in those locker facilities under any circumstances. Okay. If you are a coach and need to use the restroom there are ones located in what used to be the hospitality room also plenty of them upstairs 
You know, those are available to anybody. Quick reminder, athletes could not do suit changes in the upstairs bathrooms. Those are kind of general admission. So again, sticking with safe sport protocols, those need to be done. If, if the swimmer's going to put on a tech suit or something like that, they need to do that in the downstairs locker room. Okay. But try and get your kids to come attired. But, you know, suit underneath the warm up. Masks, not required, but strongly advised. Okay. Specifically for vaccinated persons. That's Georgia Tech policy. Spectators, again, are allowed, but sitting again might be limited. So, again, just keep that in mind. Have your parents understand that. Uh, pre buying tickets, probably a good way to make sure they can get in. All teams will have an assigned team area, either on the deck and the stands. We'll talk about that. Don't arrive early. Don't get here. Don't get there before your team entry. Don't time. Really don't like having teams have to sit outside when it's cold or God forbid raining. Okay, but we can't control that. It's the only way we can keep this thing organized. It's a lot of bodies to manage. Try again to stay in your team area unless you're going to swim. Okay? Don't just go around on the deck. Otherwise, that thing gets a little on the crowded side. Again, same thing for coaches. You know, try and stick with your team area. But like I said, coaches do have. You know, the, the ones that you're bringing to the meet, everybody has deck access this year. Limited to one of you last year. That's not the case this year. Non-compliance with these protocols could result in an unpleasant situation. So follow the rules. Next slide, please. Other stuff. Scheduled warm-ups are going to take place in the two 10-lane pools. Every team's gotten assigned lane and time. Sorry for the limited, you know, limited windows, but that's the way the numbers shook out. Okay, there's only so many people we can fit into the pool to give them time. All co all coaches must or all warm-ups must be supervised by a coach. Peak first entries only, except for the sprint lanes, which are lanes zero and nine, the two outside lanes are your sprint lane. One thing to note on that warm-up schedule, it is a situation where a lot of teams are going to have to share a lane. Other team shows up in your lane, they're there on schedule. It, the warm-up schedule is already posted, but you're going to have to share lanes with people. There's no way to get in the one to five they meet. We have 99 teams. Not everybody can have their own lane. Again, work with each other. I've tried to get it to, you know, no more than about 10 to 12 kids per lane. Again, there's only so much stuff we can fit in that, fit in that, uh, that pool at a given time and be safe. Again, the diving well is open throughout warm-ups and warm-downs you know, during prelims. So when it's crowded in there, that's a great option to hop in outside the window of your warm-up time. Relay takeoff platforms, those are going to be, as Doug mentioned, a defensive matter. There's electronic equipment that can square up, square up when the athlete left the block and when the swimmer touched the touch pad. So if we get a dual confirmed call, we'll go look at that automatically. Okay. If for some reason you've got a dual confirmed call and you want me to check it, I'll go in there and double check it. But that's an automatic process for us. Got that, you know, locked into what we're going to do. And results will be posted downstairs and upstairs, okay, in the, in the hallways. Um, on, on the deck, they'll be, for, they'll be actually out on the deck in their normal locations. But upstairs, they'll be in that back hallway. Check the results as they're posted, okay? And remember, what you see on the scoreboard or in Meet Mobile, for that matter, is unofficial. It's not official until it's taped up on the wall. So if you see a wonky time that doesn't look right, make a note of it. But as soon as you see it up in print, that hey, that's that, that same time doesn't look right, come into the timing room and talk to me. And I'll do, I'll do the check work, check backup times, the whole nine yards, give your kids the best possible opportunity to get a fair shake. Okay. But don't come flying in there because the time didn't look right on the scoreboard. You know, three seconds after the kid touched the wall. Okay. Let the process work through. Roll results on the scoreboard, you know, after, after a race. And you see it printed, then that's the time to bring it up. Yes. Question: Are the team areas the same for prelims and finals? Yes. So for prelims and finals, we will have the same team areas and the same building entry times. All that stuff stays consistent. So again, that schedule that got sent out lists both prelims and finals, warm up times. All that stuff stays the same for prelims and finals. Okay. Going back to results again. Do not or any circumstances, leave the building and three hours later, call me up and ask me, hey, in the tax broke, I'm not sure about the time in lane four, okay? That's wrong. It's not fair. It's really not fair to a kid who left the building 
and thought, hey, I'm I made it. I'm coming back. And then you find out you got bumped out because of a technical issue. That's not fair to anybody. Be responsible about this. Be accountable for this. More importantly, you know, be on top of this for your kid. If something's incorrect, every once in a while, they don't hit the touch pad. You know, things don't always work out the way they do. But there are backup procedures in, in place to address that. Give the kids a fair shake possible. Any issues regarding times or DQs are addressed by a coach only, not by a swimmer, not by some deranged parent. They're out there, folks. We all know it. Okay. But that's only a coach can come in and, again, take a deep breath. Okay, we're going to do everything we can to make sure your kids are looked after and given the fairest shake possible. You're not always going to get the answer you want. But what you will get is our level best. We do everything we can to investigate stuff as deeply as we can to make sure these kids are taken care of. Again, relay changes, declared false starts. That, again, make sure you follow those procedures. Any relay changes. Pull that out, bring it into the timing and scoring room as soon as you've got it. Question. Yeah, two questions here. Uh, first question uh, regarding finals. Are all team members credentialed allowed on the deck for finals, even if they did not make the finals for their events? Yes. If your team area is located on the deck, your team gets to stay in that area. So whether the kid made it back or not, they're allowed. Finals warm-up question. Uh, are there lane assignments, same as prelims, or is it open warm-up for finals? We're going to stick to the same assignments for those. But, again, you know, like I said, we're going to make accommodations to if, – if it's not crowded, you guys have got a little bit of license. You know, if, it, if the pool doesn't look crowded, you've got some license to hop in. Uh, is scoring top 20 for each classification or just the top 30 overall? Right. It's top 20 for each classification when we get to finals. You'll only score against the teams in your scoring division. One to three A, those teams will just score against each other in finals. Four and five A, same thing. They'll score against each other in finals only. That's split out in the athlete conduct. Uh, Doug had mentioned, you know, some of the sportsmanship stuff. We do not need to have any vandalism. We don't need some, you know, brilliant child to come in there and tear something off the wall because they think it's funny. Favorite thing is taking the soap dispensers. I mean, from summer league up to high school, they still do that stuff. Look, we get a bill for that stuff. More importantly, we get a black mark in the eyes of Georgia Tech. And if it happens enough, we're not welcome back. And as unless you have another pool that's this big and this good, it's it's the best pool in the country. We don't want to, you know, ruin this relationship by having a bunch of kids come in there and tear the place up. They think it's entertaining. Okay, they're there to swim and you know participate in the state championship meet. And more, more importantly, again, let's maintain that good relationship with Georgia Tech. Can you come back again, please, and just restate who qualifies for final, right? Versus what is our scoring in the finals? So again, the classification. The, so for example, in the girls' two hundred IM and the one to five, they meet. We're going to take the top thirty times from Friday's prelim in that event. They're going to come back and swim on Saturday. When they swim on Saturday, they're going to swim in three heats. The scoring is open. There's not a cap. If you're in heat three, you can only score in the top ten. It's open. The kid in the first heat can score first place. The kid in the top seed can go in there and have a terrible race and finish 30th. But then we're going to calculate the points of you scoring just against the teams inside of your division. Okay? So that's the way it's going to balance out. And I've got – Again, I sent out an email specifically kind of outlining that process and taking detail. Uh, there will be limited coaches' hospitality again for this year's meet. There's just no effective way to get several hundred people in that room. But we will have things like, you know, light snacks and drinks will be in there. It's going to look kind of like a convenience store. You guys come in there and make yourselves at home. I, I picked up probably uh, what most people consider a lifetime supply of juice yesterday. I bet money they'll all be gone. Um, trainer we will have a trainer on staff at all times they'll be located near the announcer's podium so again they're there they're great they can deal with you know minor stuff but if a kid dislocates a, a shoulder don't ask them to reset it doesn't work that way that's not what they're there for restricted areas you're there to swim in the state high school swim meet stay in the aquatic center don't wander around the building there's a lot of other cool stuff in there i'm not going to do the list of stuff but 
I don't need to see some kid climbing up a rock wall, you know, behind the diving tower. That doesn't fly. Vendors, uh, we're going to talk about those in just a minute. And clean up your team area before you leave. It's, it's really crucial. It's, it's the easiest way to thank Georgia Tech, it's leaving that place clean. Real quick, I'm going to turn it over to uh, David Reason, uh, the president of the Georgia High School Swim Coaches Association. Uh, just as my cohort here uh, mentioned, he's the guy that uh, wears the uh, green shirt, not the purple shirt. <laughs> Thanks, Frankie. Really appreciate it. Hey, everybody. Hope everybody had a great season and hope everybody's looking forward to having a really good state championships. This is just a reminder that if you would please join the GHSSCA, uh, we are your voice in swimming uh, in this state. Frankie works with us a great deal as well to uh, for, for the best for all of our swimmers and divers. And uh, it takes money to do this as well as provide all this all state for every classification. Uh, all state for the awards for swimmer of the year, diver of the year, coaches of the year, and then of course, first team, second team, third team, and honorable mention. So uh, all the money we make goes right back to the kids, okay? Uh, we got about 80 members right now. There's about 150 people on this um, meeting. So we'd love to have all 150 join. Greg Valley is gonna put something in the chat here as a link that you can get in touch with him. He's our treasurer uh, and let you know how much it is and how you can pay. Uh, we have a, you can do it online. Uh, Greg and Jan and Kevin are, uh, will be at the one through 5A meet if you wanna talk to them about it. And then Jim and myself and Alan will be at the 6A meet if you guys would like to talk about it then. We've scheduled February 26th, uh, a Saturday at 10 a.m. as our end of the year meeting. That gives us about three weeks after state to get everything ready with all state and everything. And then if you have any questions or have any proposals or anything like that you'd like to see done, then we'll discuss it at that point. I want to thank Frankie and Matt and Evan for all their hard work, getting us back to as close to normal as possible with our state championships and, uh, and hope to see everybody at the meeting. We will offer a Zoom session for the 26th, but we'd like to have as many people in person if you're comfortable. And I wish everybody the best of luck at state championships this weekend. I hope your kids swim fast and you guys do great. Thanks, Frankie. Thank you. Um, couple of other things to bring up um coolers so in the building the, one of the big things is you cannot bring these massive coolers in there it's gonna be like last year only personal coolers can come in the building so the mom that's coming with the full movable buffet hey there's no way that we're letting them in the back door with the team to walk that stuff in because the kid who qualified for the state meet can't carry a cooler b they also can't bring it in the front door and drop it off of the team it doesn't work that way this flatly will not fit. It's a fire code issue upstairs. Again, personal coolers only, personal stuff. Yes. Yeah, a couple, couple quick questions uh, from the chat lines. There's a question around, if only 15, as an example, swimmers from a classification makes finals, are the next five from prelims counted for the scoring, or is it just limited to those who swam in finals? It's limited just to the swimmers that swam in finals. So it would be, you know, for example, 15 qualify from 1 to 3A, 15 qualify from 4 to 5A, it'll score down through 15th place, each meet separate. So your hypothetical, if only one person qualifies yep. from a classification, there would be only one score for that event. Yep, and they'll get first place points too. Second question, for, uh, for non-coaches like athletic directors, will they be permitted entry with GHSA passes or should they pre-purchase tickets on GoFan? Can, they can use their GHSA pass to get in the building. There'll be a pass gate at the front, um, as, a, as there has been in the past. When they walk in the door, there'll be a pass gate just right out of the spectator. Again, they should come to the spectator entrance. Okay, and again, remember, your AD, unless you put them in as a coach in your submitted people that get credentials to the meet, they don't come on the deck. They don't sit with the team. They come by and visit, but they're not going to hang out. Okay. They can just sit in spectator seating with everybody else. Will concession areas be open for the meet this year? Yes. The plan is to have at least you know, the cafe. They've redone that. That's supposed to be open. I think the main concession stand is also supposed to be open. But that, guys, that's out of our control. I wish I had control over it. But you know. It's still the same nacho cheese from 2019. That's a possibility. Uh, can you use your GHSA pass to have one person come in with a coach? But I think, yeah, they, they could upstairs. Yes, that, that, I think it's permitted by GHSA. But they cannot come in with, uh, not going to come with even more importantly, 
again, guys, I, I keep coming back to this. Your team areas, you got what you need for your athletes and for the coaches. That's it. Everyone else, they need to, you know, managers are going to be managers relay alternates in another spot. You know, spectators are in their spot. If we stick to this plan, there's room for everybody. We start, you know, going, oh, well, I'm just going to bring one person. Well, there's 60, you know, 60, 70 teams in one meet, and there are 100 teams in another. That's a lot of people, folks. It adds up quick. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. So, do's and don'ts to the CRC. The do's. Respect the facility and staff. They ask you to do something. Smile and say, yes, I will do that right away. Do not tell them who you are, who you know, why they can't do this, how offended and hurt they are. Uh-uh. Doesn't work that way. Do what you're instructed to do. It's, it's for your benefit, for everyone else's benefit, for their safety. Communicate all the stuff I'm giving you. Share it with your families so they come in educated and understand what's going on. Follow instructions. I didn't send all those emails out because I love constant contact. I'm doing it because I want you guys to come in there fully knowledgeable about, knowledgeable about how all this stuff works. Clean up after yourself. I keep coming back to this. Again, just be respectful of the place. Keep track of your stuff. Don't lose stuff. But if you do, they're lost and found areas. So if it's like a suit or a towel, it's a tech suit. It's a tech suit, swimsuit. It'll most likely be in the lost and found area right behind the lifeguard stand on the deck near the announcer's podium. It's like hammer stuff into the wall, you're going to get a bill. I got a team, got a $500 painting bill one time for another swim meet. Okay. Don't block aisleways and hallways. We need clear paths for people to walk back and forth to the blocks and around the facility. Don't wander around to the facility to places you don't belong. Don't call the facility with questions about what time does the swim meet start? That's what we're here for is the meet director. What all this information we put on the internet and email to you guys is for. But don't call, you know, the switchboard at Georgia Tech. What time does the swim meet start? Don't allow crazy parents to come anywhere near the deck. Keep upstairs, okay? I know you guys don't have control over this, and they're just as big a pain in your neck as they are in ours, but we just don't need that aggravation, okay? We, we have no patience for that. I'll, I'll happily, you know, work with you guys over anything, but that to me is just a big one. Don't bring large coolers or anything else glass into the building. Okay. And last one, I didn't include it, but it happened last year. Don't let your parents send an email to the president of Georgia Tech expressing their concerns with swim meet. That's not anything that ever hits his radar, but it will hit his radar to a point to where he'll go, we don't need this aggravation. They've got issues with the meat. That comes to me. That goes to the GHSA. Okay. We're the ones that are operating the meat. Georgia Tech is just a venue for us. We're renting the facility from them. They don't operate the meat. Okay. So, like, somebody was really upset with those spectators last year. They sent, and I got the email, and it was a humdinger. And it goes, the, the president of Georgia Tech had been two weeks on the job, and he gets this thing in his inbox. I mean, that, that's the express route to, you know, you guys find another pool to host the meat. They don't, you know, it's just not another place that can do it. Going back to Dave, what Dave said, we're getting ready to reclassify, guys, and we're going to reconfigure the state meet. Okay, the numbers have kind of gotten out of balance with certain numbers of swimmers in one session and certain numbers in another. So we got a clean slate moving forward. And it's important for you guys to join that Swim Coaches Association and have a voice in how this thing gets redone. And some great ideas. Pre-COVID, we had a, I think we had a pretty good plan in place. We can discuss it at the meeting in February. To me, you know, if you're not part of this group, you're doing yourselves, you're doing your swimmers a huge. They do so much good for the sport. And more importantly, they've established a terrific relationship with the GHSA that they haven't had in the past. 
It's because of that group that the meat continues to grow, the team grow, the sport grows. It's good for everybody. So support your own community. Help us continue to take care of the sport that we all love. Uh, last but not least, I'm going to let Evan talk a little bit about the sponsors and some of the other partners of the meet, uh, with some things that may be of use for you, especially when it comes to meals. Yeah, a couple, this will take about 30 seconds. Just a reminder, for, for 10 years now, River Oak Photography has supported um, the GHSA State Championship meet. Uh, taking action photos of your individual swimmers, it's a great way to capture a memory right there uh, on the pool deck, uh, especially last year in covid uh, they help support by taking a lot of team photos as well. Uh, Pre-reservations uh, are out there on the link below. This year, they will be back to also uh, same-day reservations uh, at the pool deck. So please let your families know, certainly seniors and sometimes new freshmen uh, want to grab those photos. So uh, appreciate River Oak, and they'll be back. Uh, the second piece that's been really, I think, beneficial to teams the past few years has been uh, team meal options. So the past handful of years, Jimmy Johns has done a, a really good job of delivering uh, subs, uh, sandwiches, uh, and catering to the pool uh, to help teams who are either done swimming or if you're about to get on the bus. Uh, COVID challenge this year, Jimmy Johns is really short on drivers and will not be delivering directly to the pool. They're happy to still support uh, doing pre-planned orders uh, their location is less than a mile away from campus uh, for pickup only. So if you guys want to jump on the app or the website, plan your meals through Jimmy John's and have somebody pick it up. Easy way to feed your folks before they get on the bus. Uh, also, Gusto, uh, growing, growing uh, uh, business here in Atlanta. Uh, former GHSA swimmers uh, help run that business, but they are uh, also able to do pickup. But also, if you go ahead and see this uh, email address below uh, and their website, uh, they will deliver to the pool for pre-planned team orders only. And we'll have a table set up on the mezzanine level for any meal pickup. So if you haven't tried Gusto, it is a really, really good uh, flavor-filled pack as well. So give that a try for one of those two options. Again, these are there to make your lives hopefully easier. And maybe the team parents will pick up your meal as well, coaches. So uh, thanks for taking a look at that. Uh, again, this presentation will be uh, put out on the internet uh, briefly following uh, the close out of this meeting uh, for all you guys, and uh, we'll take any additional questions. And more importantly, um, while we're waiting for any additional questions, I, I, again, I go back to what I said at the start of the meeting. I, guys, you do such an awesome job every year. So we're, we want to be there to help you guys out any way that we can um, during the meet, uh, short of me you know, wrapping on a suit and no, getting, no, no. getting in and doing the butterfly, which nobody wants to see, unless I got a paramedic on standby. Um, really, we're there to help you guys out and make your experience as positive as possible. Um, I'm really excited to see what your kids are going to do. We always have really terrific quality in our meet. And, uh, I think we've got a great week of swimming in front of us. So, congratulations on terrific seasons getting your kids into the state meet. Uh, again, we, we want to make this a very special week for everybody. Um, again, for those of you that were late into the meeting, don't forget, if you didn't do so already, make sure you input your team name and your name into the chat feature. That's how we're taking attendance. Um, so, again, we really um, can't thank you all enough. So I'll leave it open for another minute or two and uh, for questions, and then, well, I'll go watch some football. Uh, hey Frank, a quick question. Um, yes, sir. Uh, on the uh, the seating assignments, I have got two seats, um, and I have two athletes, and then myself and a manager. I sent you this in an email, it, it, and I thought maybe you could answer it quickly. All right, and I'll, I'll connect with you offline to, to address that. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Hey Frankie. Yeah. Really quickly, guys, the GHSSCA spring meeting will be February 26, 10 a.m. at Westminster. Okay. Get you guys the specifics about where it's going to be at, what room and whatever. It will be in, located in the Pete Higgins pool facility, but it'll be 10 a.m. the 26th of February at Westminster. Thank you. Hey, Frankie, with uh, relay, relay alternates being in the stands, are we expecting a coach to be with them? No. They're, they're you know, essentially, they are glorified spectators. Is, is their their
Any additional questions? There's none in the chat line right now. Feel free to come off mute if you'd like to ask a question. Otherwise, we will finish up in the next 30 seconds. Is Vicki still on here? Don't think so. Yes, I'm here. Oh, Sorry, there, I was like, on mute. I'm okay, here. Okay, so I'm here. the six and seven eight girl says one p.m. one ten warm up. If I get them there at noon, you're not going to go. Think you'll start any earlier than noon, do you? I would love to start earlier than noon just because we're so late, but I don't see that happening. <laughs> okay, so if I get them there by noon, they're not going to miss any warm ups or whatever. No, I think we should be fine because let me look at my timeline here. I think even if we're an hour early, that would be 12. I mean, that's 12 o'clock and yeah. we're not going to be, we're an hour early on the day, not on the half day. You know what I mean? So I think, I think you're plenty um, good. And um, one of your girls needs to change her sheets. You're one of the emails I sent. So you want to get on I that. did. I got it. Can you okay. check? What she said she did. Okay. As of one o'clock, she didn't, but I'll look then and I'll let you know. Yeah, I got a text about 20 minutes ago. She did it. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. Yep. Who needs a warm up to do cannonballs? Easy. Ron Easy. Burgundy. Easy. Uh, when will, when, when will he be available for distribution? Rick, I think we're going to have those out probably by Tuesday. Um, I'm going to send out an updated site sheet probably tomorrow morning. Did have a couple of small tweaks, nothing significant. Um, but, uh, my plan is to have something out to you guys electronically by Tuesday to allow you to go to Kinko's or wherever you want to go. You can go still the school copier. So um, hopefully that'll help. Vicki, for seven, um, 6A and 7A boys, what time do you think the earliest we could probably be okay to get there? Oh, gosh. You guys ask me these questions, and I just <laughs> wish I, I wish I could give you a really good answer. But... Right. Um, Okay, so right now we're looking at 543. Quite frankly, I'm hoping that we're probably gonna start that event around five. Five, I'm okay. Hoping, um, or sorry, that warm up. I'm hoping we're gonna start around five. So, but you know, again, it just depends. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the kids have done such a great job in the past of keeping on with it. But God forbid there's an accident or there's something or power outage or whatever. You just don't know. And then, you know, we get pushed back. So I'm very hesitant in giving you any, like, oh, she said five o'clock. So, you know, I should have been fine. Um, so, yeah, I'd probably go with whatever's on the timeline and just figure at least an hour earlier. Like I said, we're usually not an hour earlier. It's usually an hour earlier on the back end. Like I anticipate us finishing around eight o'clock and not around nine o'clock. Okay. Um, so, yeah. All right. Thank you. Yep. Hey, Frankie, this is Andy right. Howard. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Andy. Hey, yeah, yeah, from the GHSA. Just wanted to uh, ask a question. I just got a text from a coach that has missed this meeting uh, for whatever reason. Um, you're recording it. Can she get credit if she watches the recording? Yeah, the check should be made payable to. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, we'll record this and send it out to the coaches later today. Okay, great. And I, I want to also say thank you and Matt for all the hard work that y'all do. And uh, I also want to let everybody know that um, uh, Vicky has tapered this diving meet down to the six dives. And I was part of a National Federation uh, Zoom meeting about a month ago and other states are interested in this kind of thing too uh we're uh, actually getting some um correspondence with michigan and their representative there to be able to do the same type thing so that's a positive thing and it uh shows that we're trying to do things the right way and i applaud all of you thanks andy we appreciate the support of the ghsa as well and you being our boys glad to do it All right, kids, let's go watch some football. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Um, we'll see you this week. If any of your questions weren't answered during the meeting, please just email me directly. I'll be happy to help and answer anything that I can. Uh, I promise the emails will start out by the end of the week, and then you can wait an entire year, unless you're in ASA, the summer league with me. They'll start coming in June. <laughs> so have a terrific weekend, everyone. Thank you so much.
Bye. Hey, Frankie. Yes. Would you consider trying to get the last group in as fast as possible on? Yeah. Friday? Yeah. I mean, that's, if, if, if we're, if we're caught up, I mean, my, my goal is trying to get you guys in the building. Yeah. Because I, 